Okay, today's vintage toy and repair is going to be on this Astro Robot. This toy was uh, made by Gakken in Japan in 1970. And there's also a version that has a uh, yellow dome. This has a red dome. There are uh, lights here, here, and here that blink very, very quickly. I don't even know if they're going to show up on the camera because they're not super bright, but at least they're still the original bulbs. And here's a peek at the original box cover. And being a plastic toy and almost 50 years old now, the plastic gets very brittle. And as you can see on these thin plastic legs, things tend to break. And I'm going to show you some pictures of what's on the inside and what breaks and what needs to be fixed to uh, keep things going. But first, we'll uh, talk about the robot. It has two C-cell batteries. It has a switch with the center offs for forward and reverse walking. And the arms swing free. It walks a lot like the Mr. Monster robot. So basically, I'm talking about an action like that. And some of the little lights in there. They're, like I say, they're not super bright. Plus this room is lit. But they blink. So I believe that would be your forward. Doesn't make a lot of headway. But that's the way it's designed. Then of course it has a reverse. And now let's just take a peek at the pictures I took while I was repairing it on the inside. I'm going to move you a little bit closer to the monitor. And that'll probably work, right? So, you can see these are the feet, and this is a metal base plate. And here's your metal gearbox. This is the motor. And here you can see the legs. This, these black things are little metal clips. When the leg is made, the plastic is cut out. There's only one little teeny strip of plastic that holds this entire leg piece together. And this metal clip, because when they build it, they have to slide the leg in from the bottom, get it around the crank, and then they put the metal clip in. And because you have an inside leg and an outside leg, they had to design it that way in order to be able to build the thing. But they should have added a whole lot more plastic meat back here. There's room in the, inside the toy for that because in this particular case, one of the legs on, on that side had broken uh, because it's so thin. And we'll get into that. We'll go to another picture here. We'll get the clicker. Um, but also in getting it running, the good thing about this particular motor is there are holes where you can see the brushes. So once I got the motor running a little bit, I was able to put contact sprayer cleaner in there for the brushes, and that got the RPMs up. But the motor was uh, squealing horribly. Um, there, you know, there aren't any actual bearings in these toy motors. We call it oil the bearings, but what it really comes down to is the shaft from the commutator just comes through plastic. And of course, I put a drop of oil on this back one because you can get to that, but that didn't fix the squealing, so that meant the front one had to be done. In order to do that, I have to remove this whole metal frame that has the motor clipped down, pull the motor out, get the drop of oil on the shaft, then, then reassemble all that. So let's go on to the uh, next picture here. So here you have a, a same position. I just pulled the camera back further so that you can see on the back of the robot there's the switch that's wired for the forward and reverse. These are pieces of tape that hold those two little lights into the gun holes in place. And you're basically seeing the uh, the same same layout here. Top of the head is up here with the one light that goes up into the dome. And so one possible solution to uh, beef these things up since they're getting more brittle as they get old is this is on the inside of the robot and can't be seen when it's assembled so I got uh, strips of styrene this entire robots made in styrene plastic other than this metal frame and this piece of metal here 
and made them as long as I could. They can't interfere with the leg going up, so there's a point where you have to stop there, and they can't interfere with the leg going down, so there's a point where you have to stop there. But by adding uh, the styling strips to beef up those legs, it's uh, less likely that they're going to break in the future. And again, since it's on the inside of the robot, it doesn't really show up. So that's what I did to uh, beef up the legs and repair the one leg that was broken. Here, you can actually see the uh, the wiper. And you can't quite see the little uh, crank cam that hits it, but basically the frame is one side of the uh, power supply, if you will. The lights all terminate to the other side, so they're waiting for anything to touch that little wiper. And the little crank that spins around hits that, and that's what made the, uh, the lights blink really quickly, even though they're very hard to see. And here I am experimenting with the body on, making sure everything was still going to work. And now you can see how all this stuff would be on the inside and won't be visible when, when it is assembled. Uh, close by the boxes. I think I have some more pictures. In interesting thing about the boxes on the inside of this top cover that you just looked at, they do have glued in the... Uh, clear plastic um, piece which means this whole perforated piece on the cardboard I'll go back one picture could be or not one more than one we'll go back could be torn out to turn it into a window box display it's where you'd actually see the toy that's inside the box or pre prepped that way you don't see that done too often uh, chrome dome is another robot that I've always noticed well, at least on the examples that I've had, was done that way. Okay, and again, just making sure everything's going to fit together. It's why the arms aren't on yet. These are just test fit pictures. Here you can see inside the uh, the battery box. The way it was made, there was actually just one screw that held the two body halves together. And most of these metal crimps on the flanges, that, that little teeny piece of plastic that would have been down there is broken off long ago and uh, this part actually was fractured and cracked on the inside too and as you can see here the uh, switch locking mechanism still exists but plastic has broken away to the point where it will keep falling out so I had to fabricate a piece of metal for that switch lock to slide in fabricated and bent to the body side and a slot and the switch lock part can now slide in this metal because the plastic pieces were long gone. Not real attractive from the outside. I suppose I could paint uh, the bits of metal that show blue to help them blend in. But then when the lid closes and comes in here, this slides forward and locks into the uh, battery compartment. And they're just uh, beauty shots of what the robot looks like when it's all put back together. But you've already seen that, because we've already run the robot. So, there you have it. Uh, the only other thing I can comment on is Asto Robot. I don't know if Asto is a Japanese word that doesn't translate right, or whether it was just a normal misspelling. Maybe they meant Astro, because Astro Robot would sound more space-themed like. So, is it a translation error, or is it a spelling error? Who knows? But it's Asto Robot, Gakken, Japan, 1970.